Hi, everybody. Welcome once again to Out of the Ordinary, Into the Extraordinary. I'm Robert Taylor, coming to you on WMTV. And I'm Pamela Hill Taylor, and as always, we bring you guests who are uplifting, enlightening, educational, entertaining. And we definitely have some great guests today. As you know, we go into the metaphysical realm, the healing arts, the creative arts. So these people cover all three. Uh, gives us great in, uh, pleasure to introduce the co-founders of Divine Guidance Institute, Reverend Doctors Mike and Nicole Sebastian. Oh, Welcome thank you. to thank the you show. So thank you so much. Yeah, yes. Yes. Thank, thank, <laughs> thank you for having us. Yes, indeed. And of course, this is not your first time uh, on the media. No, no, no yeah. it's not. Tell us about some of the shows you've uh, you've been on. Before. Oh well, we've been on uh, A and E Network and VH1 and E Entertainment and wow. uh, various local as well. You know, working with um, in the fields of therapy and addiction and divine guidance and, and dreams and nightmares and things like that, working with people and to achieve breakthroughs. Wow. Yeah. And um, maybe soon you're going to have a show coming up. Uh, yes, we are in negotiations yeah. for our own TV show. Yeah. That's fantastic. Thank you. So where did Divine Guidance Institute come from, Mike? It all started many, many years ago, actually with a dream because we teach people through dreams, signs, and mm -hmm. intuition as a way of knowing. Every day we hear, how do I know? I mean, how do I know about this relationship? How, how do I know about my career? Mm -hmm. Should I move to a new city? And we use, these, uh, we use these techniques, dream signs, and intuition as a way yeah. of getting answers, as a way of knowing. Originally, I had a dream. I always feel like MLK when yeah, I yeah, say yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I had a dream. Many, many years ago, I'm teaching college in Texas, and I had a dream, and in the dream there was a girl, a stranger. Many people have those kinds of dreams, but the stranger was named Nicole, and in the dream, also she was a personal fitness trainer. Fast forward five years, I'm still teaching at the University of Texas, sociology. Who walks into my classroom but the dream girl? <laughs> Nicole. <laughs> and I'd like to say, oh, I remembered the dream and said, hey, dream girl, it's been five years, so give me a break. I forgot the dream totally. However, when I had the dream, it was one of those very clear dreams, and I journaled the whole dream. Wow. As our uh, relationship began to heat up and we went forward with it over a period of time, I started having deja vus or flashes, like I've been here before. I've done this before because Nicole started studying for being a personal trainer and taking the test. And that triggered it within me and I went back and actually found the journal of the dream where I met Nicole in chemistry class in college. And it was a epiphany. It changed my life. At that point I realized that dreams were showing me a snapshot of my future, where I was headed and how it was going to go. So now we started teaching other people how to do the same, and that's how it all began. Wow. So with Divine Guidance Institute, I guess the main message would be that if you utilize dreams, signs, and intuition as a methodology of confirmation for any decision you have to make and, and guidance that you need on a daily basis, you will receive um, just perfect guidance 24-7. Mm -hmm. So we're organized as a uh, nonprofit, 501c3. Mm -hmm. We do quite a bit of pro bono work, free work, with target groups like uh, veterans with PTSD, yeah. okay. oh. One, people mm -hmm. who are who are the suffering. Stress yeah, disorder. exactly. Yeah. Anxiety, a lot of that. insomnia, so nightmares, night terrors, mm -hmm. suicidal thoughts, and they're already doing drugs, but it's not helping them. So no, that just masks the exactly. issue. All that does is deal with exactly. the symptoms and not the mm -hmm. underlying cause. So what you're doing is dealing with the underlying cause with your techniques. Exactly. Yeah. And we go in and we use dreams, dream therapy, to stop the nightmares, stop the night terrors. And also we use toning techniques or sound to directly address the anxiety, the stress, uh, the suicidal thoughts, and it works almost instantly. It's the only thing we've found that works instantly and it's it's called the hue. But we do quite a bit of that work um, all over actually. Phone consults or we go out in person. We like to do house calls yeah. that way yeah. people are comfortable in their home and yeah. whatnot. Yeah. 
So we work with a lot of vets and a lot of addicts. Um, and again, it's pro bono work. So, you know, with, between the sessions sure. and our books, you know, which are based on a do-it-yourself model, you know, if you don't want us or you don't have us, you can have the book and you've got, you and know. Some people respond really well to that. They yeah. want the privacy of yes. their own right. home, their own uh, inner mm -hmm. uh, mentor. And that works too. Yes. And these are great to have the books available mm -hmm. like yeah. that from, from people who know. Mm -hmm. Well, let's, uh, let's have a look at some of the books. Uh, we've got some of the titles right. here. Uh, Sociology. Of, oh, no, we're starting out with Trust, Trust Yourself. yourself. Okay. T tell us all about that. Trust Yourself. Master Your Dreams, Master Your Destiny, a personal roadmap for knowingness. This is uh, a combination of the dreams, signs, and intuition it's filled with methodology, tools, and techniques to enhance and build that muscle, if you will, with your innate abilities. You know, we firmly believe that regardless of faith, a person's faith or lack yeah. thereof, these things occur for each human 24-7. You get a gut feeling. You, you've had a dream four to six a night, even if a person doesn't remember. They still are dreaming. And then you've every most... Uh, you know, most often throughout the day, people have had a coincidence, uh -huh. a sign, if you will. And so um, the book has all three and um, different stories, techniques, and tools to enhance. And use that for guidance and to test it and track it. We journal call it, it. Yes, yeah. we call mm -hmm. it dream tracking. And when you, when you journal a dream and then uh, every three to six months, if you refer back, you will, you will know, come to know, mm -hmm that 90% uh, of the dreams were prophetic. And it's all laid out before you. And mm -hmm. through tracking, you know, that's how you get real accustomed, real familiar, real, real comfortable utilizing these tools huh. um, as a complement to, uh, to common sense. Mm -hmm. You know, it takes it yeah. one step further, if you will. Well, this culture has been so heavy on the whole intellectual mm -hmm. approach. Mm -hmm. Everything rational. Intel rational, intellectual. And then th th this... Um, but that's not what the world's made up of entirely. <laughs> yeah. There's a lot of the other, the yeah. signs, the symbols, the uh, all going on. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Especially, uh, you were saying you, ca you came from the academic world. Right. Yeah. I, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> taught for too many years at, yeah. at a half a dozen different universities throughout the United States, sociology. I'm a sociologist, but yeah. they come totally from the head. Right. And it was mm -hmm. a real adjustment in my life because all my peers were uh, doctors. They were all they were all sociologists, and they all come from here. But they could never make the the leap to co combine the heart and the head to use intuition and those other tools that we have naturally. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that's something that I moved into, and I found for myself, for me, it improved my ability to make a decision and know it's the right decision mm -hmm. by. A thousand percent. It, it went from this to that. Whoa. By combining the two, I could feel a resonance as to whether it resonated. I knew whether it was correct or not. Nicole and I call it reading the fabric. Yeah. Yeah. And in order to do that, I'm really quiet within. I'm fairly neutral. I'm not making a judgment, and I'm not coming from the head, and suddenly I'll know what's the right decision. It just comes in. We had a guest on the show. It was a, a well-known hyp hypnotist, mm -hmm. and it, he, of course, said that 90 percent of what is it? The consciousness is, or, or 90 percent of what you think is coming from the, um, or it's 90 percent emotion, 10 percent uh, intellect. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So when decisions come up, we're really <coughs> coming from our from our emotional self, even though we may not, or the unconscious, 90% right. unconscious, 10% right. conscious. And so most of this us are using the 10%. Yeah, and to, to uh, deny that 90% is <laughs> illogical, actually. Right. Yeah. Right. So yeah. what you're doing is great. You're helping people to recognize that and work with that. And and we, that we makes get, a lot of sense, common we, sense. Yeah, we get that a lot, a lot of, in some of the venues where we'll do a presentation, one of the questions which is common is people go, how do you tell the difference between intuition and paranoia? I've been, <laughs> I've been, I've been burnt by my intuition so many times. And, wow. and I say, no, you haven't. You haven't been burnt once. You've been burnt by the mind. Intuition comes in, slips in just yeah. before the thought comes. And it's mm. a feeling. It's not here. It's here. And it's yeah. learning to recognize it. Once we recognize yeah. it, we can, we can act on it. Yeah. Now we have to come to the important question. Do you therefore accept the concept of we are the soul having a human experience? Is that where it's coming from, you believe? The exactly. Or even the divine 
Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. I think we're all a spark. All a spark, regardless, like I say, of, uh, of a person's faith or lack thereof, you yeah. know, uh, atheist, agnostic, or Christian, Buddhist, uh, regardless. Um, we all are a spark of God and have that within us and have those innate abilities and the potential to just unfold. And, um, you know, for the atheist and the agnostic, I, I use the word or the term higher self. Uh -huh. You know, yeah. to me, it's all the yeah, same. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I don't get caught up in those words, and especially working with the various people that we work with. Oh, yeah. Uh, you know. The whole gamut. Of yeah, yeah. You've got to be real loose about it and real um, accepting and just, and uh, to raise the comfort level and, and, um, and the rapport and get it rolling. You know, we don't yeah. have time to, to deal with, you know, this versus this. Semantics. It's like religiosity. Yeah, yeah. yeah we, we try to be inclusive. Yeah. And I, yeah, some, yeah, of the, yeah. some of the most loving, compassionate people I've met might be atheist or agnostic. Yep. But yet they're, they've got the love. They mm -hmm. understand intuition. And maybe, you know, their, their belief is something other than what mine is, but who cares? That's just I mean, where they are at exactly, in their journey at exactly. this moment. They might, might, that might change. You know, it loves yeah. the key anyway, you know, yeah. divine, yeah. divine yeah. love, that higher love, not the emotional love, the mushy love, no, no, but that higher love with neutrality and acceptance. And with that, these, yeah. the tools, like your intuition, you can, it's like turning the volume up on it. I mean, everything yeah. enhances that way. And uh, we have a really good tool on um, the Just Say Hugh book, I don't know mm -hmm. if you can see it, yeah. but um, if I may share with your viewers the uh, the Hue technique, which is our number one tool, it'll give anyone a breakthrough overnight. Oh, so everybody wow. listen up. This wow. is a great <laughs> tip you're going to really wow. get. He, so much. he invites you to Hue alone. <laughs> yeah. First, I'll give you a demo. It's a sound, yeah. and then we'll explain it a little bit. Okay. okay. All you do is inhale and say Hue. You can feel it, <laughs> the resonance, what the, you know, I say drink a beer, take a Xanax, or <laughs> just say Hugh. <laughs> it's cheaper and not addictive, you know. That's right, yeah. No therapist required. No hangover. No prescription needed. Yeah. No you know. after effects. Exactly. Absolutely. Does it have to be a specific pitch? No. Your own pitch is perfect. Mm -hmm. Actually, there's four ways you can do it. You can do Hugh out loud. You can spell it H. You, you can whisper it, or you can do it silently if you don't want to do it out loud. The central nervous system doesn't know the difference between something real or something imagined and responds accordingly. So if you have nightmares or anxiety or stress or decision making or you're looking for divine guidance or maybe you, you know, you're, you're not feeling well and you, you know, you need yeah. a boost in that area. You can simply say hue. We, we recommend five to 20 minutes a day. Um, and it's so user friendly. I lay on the couch with the mm -hmm. cat and boom. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, we usually <laughs> fall asleep. <laughs> uh, Michael likes to sit in a chair and do it. You know, some people like their yoga positions. Mm -hmm. So right. it's so user friendly. Um, and again, out loud or silently. So you could do it while you're driving. You could do it at work. You could do it before you go to sleep at night. Um, but to fit it in, like you brush your teeth and you do the hue and maybe you go yeah. to the gym, you know, if you really get it rolling, mm -hmm. this, this tool, whoa, it, it's life changing. But even, uh, we call it hewing in a pinch. So you've got a moment, you know, a stressful moment. You can hue right in that moment yeah. to, to feel better and get some relief. In addition to hewing daily to build the intuition and to build the divine guidance and to build the love within your heart and